Dignikaya content. <coughs> Dignikaya 1, 1, 1. The Brahmajala Sutta, the all embracing net of views, mainly concerned with 62 types of wrong view. In this important sutta, the first in the Tipitaka, the Buddha describes 62 philosophical and speculative views concerning the self, the soul, and the world, the universe, the environment, that were prevalent among spiritual seekers of his day. In rejecting these teachings, many of which thrive to this day, he decisively establishes the parameters of his own. Dignakaya 147, that is Dignakaya 2, the Saminipala Sutta, the fruits of the contemplative life, King Ajata Satu of Magadha, asks the Buddha about the benefits in this life of being a Samana, a recluse or a renunciant. The Buddha's reply is in terms of becoming an Arahant. King Ajatasattu asked the Buddha, what are the fruits of the contemplative life visible in the here and now? The Buddha replies by painting a comprehensive portrait of the Buddhist path of training, illustra illustrating each stage of the training with vivid similes. Sutta number Dignakaya 3, the Pali title is Ambata Sutta. Ambata, the Brahmin, is sent by his teacher to find whether the Buddha possesses the 32 bodily marks. But on arrival he is rude to the Buddha on accounts on grounds of descent, caste. The Buddha responds that he is actually higher born <coughs> than Ambata by social convention, but that he himself considers those fulfilled in conduct and wisdom as higher. Dignakaya 4 Sona Dandanta Sutta The Buddha asks Sona Danda the Brahmin what are the qualities that make a Brahmin? Sona Danda gives five but the Buddha asks if any can be omitted and argues him down to two morality and wisdom. Dignakaya 5, Kuta Danta Sutta. Kuta Danta, the Brahmin, asks the Buddha how to perform a sacrifice. The Buddha replies by telling of one of his past lives as chaplain to a king, where they performed a sacrifice which consisted of making offerings with no animals killed. Dignakaya 6, Mahali Sutta. In reply to a question as to why a certain monk sees divine sights but does not hear divine sounds, the Buddha explains that it is because of the way he has directed his meditation. Dignakaya 7, Jaliya Sutta. Asked by two Brahmins whether the soul and the body are the same or different, the Buddha describes the path to wisdom and asks whether one who has fulfilled it would, would bother with such questions. Dignakaya 8 Kasapa Sihanada Sutta Alternatively, Maha Sihanada or just Sihanada Sutta. The word Sihanada literally means lion's roar. This discourse is concerned with asceticism. Dignakaya 9, or in Pali text, Digga 1178, Digga Dignakaya 9, Potapada Sutta, about Potapada. Asked about the cause of the arising of sanya, usually translated as perception, the Buddha says it is through training. He explains the path as above up to the jhanas and the arising of their perceptions, and then continues with the first three formless attainments. The sutta then moves on to other topics, the self 
and the unanswered questions. The wandering ascetic Potapada brings to the Buddha a tangle of questions concerning the nature of perception. The Buddha clears up the matter by reviewing the fundamentals of concentration meditation and showing how it can lead to the ultimate cessation of perception. Dignikaya 10 Subha Sutta Ananda describes the path taught by the Buddha. So that's the end of the... F actually it might not be... No, it isn't. Dignikaya 11 Kevata Sutta to Kevata Kevata asks the Buddha why he does not gain disciples by working miracles. The Buddha explains that people would simply dismiss this as magic and that the real miracle is the training of his followers. This discourse explores the role of miracles and conversations with heavenly beings as a possible basis for faith and belief. The Buddha, the Buddha does not deny the reality of such experiences, but he points out that of all possible miracles, the only reliable one is the miracle of instruction in the proper training of the mind. As for heavenly beings, they are subject to greed, anger and delusion, and so the information they give, especially with regard to the miracle of instruction, is not necessarily trustworthy. Thus the only valid basis for faith is the instruction that, when followed, brings about the end of one's own mental defilements. The tale that concludes the discourse is one of the finest examples of the early Buddhist sense of humour. Dignikaya 12, Lohika Sutta, to Lohika, on good and bad teachers. A non-Buddhist poses some good questions. If Dhamma is something that one must realize for oneself, then what's the role of a teacher? Are there any teachers who don't deserve some sort of criticism? The Buddha's reply includes a sweeping summary of the entire path of practice. And Dignikaya 13, Taivija Sutta, asked about the path to union with God, with Brahma. The Buddha explains it in terms of the Buddhist path, but ending with the four Brahma Viharas, the divine dwellings. The, abbreviate, the abbreviated way the text is written out makes it unclear how much of the path comes before this. Pausing that. That is the end of the first vaga, the first division of the Diginikaya, the Sila vaga. The section on morality, pausing that.